This picture is the official logo of the 1994 Clementine Deep Space Mission, and it contains a cryptographic message. Someone deeply involved wanted to disclose the conspiracy, committed by the United States Department of Defense. Here we see the front cover of the Brookings Report. The Brookings Institution wrote this in 1964 NASA. The report examines the potential implications for the discovery of extraterrestrial life. NASA knew that probably one day satellites, or manned missions, would find alien artifacts, alien technology or alien life. The report also includes a study, how governments should handle information, and it mentions the possibility that under particular circumstances, a government might, or might not find it advisable, to withhold the discovery of extraterrestrial life, from the public. Project Golden Dragon provides indications, which suggests that the United States government, made a discovery on the moon, and found it advisable, to withhold this discovery from the public. Here you see a drawing of the Clementine satellite, and the two smaller photos, show the Deep Space Mission Operations Center, from where Clementine was controlled. On the 25th of January 1994, the Deep Space Program Science Experiment, or Clementine, was sent to the Moon, by the United States Department of Defense. The satellite, exposed to extreme heat and cold, had to deal with the high level of radiation. Clementine sensors looked in the ultraviolet, visual and infrared spectrum. The digital camera, a Thompson MMPC CD camera, was of military standard, and produced a continuous string of film strips, of 5 kilometers wide. Overhead the lunar south pole, the satellite flew at an altitude of 425 kilometers. The resolution varied from 7 to 20 meters depending on both sun, and camera angle. In November 1991, the Naval Research Laboratory was briefed, by the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization, on the Clementine concept. Government agencies only act, when they receive proper fundings, and the Naval Research Laboratory, received fundings in March 1992, so in a normal situation, this would mean that the Naval Research Laboratory, started with the DSPSC project, in March 1992, but is that true? I found this resume, of someone who worked for the NRL, and who was involved in the DSPSC program, till May 1991. Did the Clementine program, start before November 1991? The original and untouched resume, is on file. What about this mysterious case, of a sudden computer malfunction, which caused the depletion, of all fuel Clementine needed, for course corrections, so it was unable to perform? the second phase of the mission. Flying to asteroid geographos, and taking images for scientific purposes? Was there really a malfunction, and did Clementine lose her fuel, and electrical power? We are being told the same story over and over again, and from various sources. Unfortunately we cannot check the story, of the fuel depletion ourselves, but is the satellite really as dead, as the military claims? Nine months after the satellite had been declared dead, by both the military, and NASA, this message had been left by Stephen Collins, who is a former Mars Observer flight team member, and who works for JPL, NASA. He congratulates a mysterious group, nicknamed the Batcave Bunch, on their recent contact with Clementine, and he specifically mentions the people, that built the battery. In other words, Clementine never was completely dead, as the Batcave Bunch would not have been able to connect to Clementine's onboard computer. Clementine is still in space, certainly not lost and gone forever, but real-time tracking is difficult. Of all online satellite trackers, there is only one that actually tracks this satellite. Clementine 1 uses NORAD identification, 22973 and COSPAR identification 1994-004A. As we can see, the satellite is about 350,000 kilometers from Earth, on March 8. On March 27, the satellite is very near Earth, and as we can see on the next image, 
the satellite is just about to make the swing around Earth. According to an official statement made by Colonel Bridges, Director of Defense Information U.S. Department of Defense, on a press conference on 3 December 1996, Clementine is to be seen as a little planet, moving around the Sun in an 11-year orbit and it would be back near Earth, in nine years. However his information does not match today's orbital data, as we clearly see, that Clementine is not, in an 11-year orbit around the Sun, but in high eccentric orbit with Earth, and based on revolutions per day, she is near Earth 32 times each year, with the closest approach, of 801 kilometers. Either the military is not properly informed, the statement false, the transcript not correct, or someone is not telling the truth. This is hypothetical, but should Clementine be operational, then the satellite is Earth's most forward early warning system, for any approaching known or unknown objects. With cameras capable of looking in multiple wavelengths, Clementine might be able to detect potential threats from outer space. The old Clementine Internet Browser version 1.5 no longer allows the download of files. When we communicate with the server we see its unique name, Galilei. The military has never been officially involved in scientific missions before Clementine, but is this a reference to Galileo? which is a scientific and non-military mission from 1989. The United States Department of Defense sent a satellite to the moon, and the big question is why. There are official readings but what if there was a hidden agenda? The Galileo spacecraft was launched on October 18, 1989, and performed two moon flybys. The first one on December 8, 1990 and the second on December 8, 1992. Galileo provided clearer views of the lunar dark side, and the polar regions of the Moon, than all lunar orbiter and all Apollo missions. Of all high-resolution images that Galileo took, these photos are the only images available. Is there something on the Moon that we are not supposed to see? Perhaps an activity that produces colorful lights, lightning and temporary coloring of the moon's surface? This is the front cover of an official NASA report. This report from July 1968 contains hundreds of sightings of transient lunar phenomena. These sudden and short colorings of the moon's surface have been observed for at least 1,000 years, and often by multiple witnesses. Although scientists claim we see outgassing, or the impact of asteroids, on the moon's surface, there is no real evidence that builds these theories, so it is still a mystery. This is probably one of the best photos ever taken of a transient lunar phenomena. Made by Leon Stewart from Tulsa, Oklahoma, USA, on the 15th of November 1953. Look at the bright spot located between Pallas and Schroeder. Crater Alphonsus is known for reports of glowing reddish clouds. October 26, 1956, Deans Moralter took photos of the crater in ultraviolet, and he saw blurred rills on the floor. The blur was not visible on the infrared photos, and professional astronomers did not accept his explanation of possible volcanic activity. Another observation concerning Alphonsus was done on November 3, 1958 by Nikolai A. Kozarev. While looking through the eyepiece of a 50-inch reflector, he observed that the central peak of the crater had an unusual reddish color, and looked blurred. Spectrograms showed the emission of carbon vapor, and this confirmed his observation. Nikolai. Believed to have seen possible volcanic activity, but his emission results were never officially confirmed. Almost one year later, on 23 October 1959, Nikolai Kozarev reported another sighting of a reddish TLP in Alphonsus, and again the spectrogram showed unusual features. There is great variety in the descriptions of transient lunar phenomena, as they can be star-like, 
bright and sparkling spots in various colors, red spots, bright clouds, hazy, nebulous or luminous, red or yellow.